Welcome to the dig site named Jehovah Shama, a Hebrew name of God. So let's get digging. We have finally made it to our last dig site of the seven I am statements of Jesus. In our last dig, we discovered the way, the truth, and the life. There are many ways or paths, but there is only one way that leads to the truth and everlasting life. Where this life comes from to create that bumper crop that we will talk about today will help us produce sweet tasting fruit. After all, you can have a bumper crop that is tasteless, or maybe even sour. Let's continue on with our seventh I am statement of Jesus. Are you ready? Let's read it together. John 15, 5. I am the vine. Ye are the branches. By now, you understand that this I am is very special. This bold statement from Jesus should leave us with no confusion of who he really is. He is who he says he is. He is the God of the now, ready to be always present in helping us in our lives as Psalms 46 verses 1 through 2 declares. He is certainly not limited to the past and he is definitely not limited to the present and he is undoubtedly an extension of our future. He has disclosed and revealed who he is throughout history and is written about through the testimony of many lives through the top ranking book of all time that declares he is who he says he is. As we will see, the first part of the statement of John 15, 5 is incomplete without the rest of the verse. So we will be digging into the whole verse for the complete context. There are layers of meaning in the before and after verses as usual. These extra verses define our primary verse and provide us with greater meaning. We have a large area to cover, so let's get started. The vine. Remember the word the? We learned and understood that Jesus is unashamed of declaring himself as the one and only here. He is the one and the only vine that supplies his own divine strength and life to his followers. Everything that is needed for a plant to be fruitful and to flourish and to prosper. Second Peter 1 verse 4 says that we are partakers or sharers of that divine nature of Christ's life. There is the life word. As a Christ follower, we are connected to the vine, which reveals the greatest secret of all time. That secret is that of the Christian's life who is abiding in him, which shows Christ being evident and very visual in their personal life. As you can see, the vine is a lot. The vine is a life support system that coils or wraps about the objects which this verse refers to as followers, collectively or individually. They are rolled in a spiral-like way, binding together the followers to himself, supporting them and nourishing them. There is a vital connection between the vine and the branch that produces the fruit of the plant. John 15, 4 says, Abide in me and I in you. To abide means to endure, to persist, and to remain.
the branch thrives in living an obedient life and has its dependence upon the vine, which is Christ Jesus. We can see how tasting and seeing that the Lord is good as the branch remains in his ongoing, minute by minute, supply of grace. This life-giving grace is sweet nourishment to the branch. Too often, we become proud and independent, functioning on our own thinking. I can do this. This statement is related to those suckers on a plant, which I will talk about in a minute. John 5.15 deals with this mentality by finishing with the warning that we cannot grow and produce the great tasting sweet fruit without him. The branch, that's us, cannot bear fruit by itself, except it abide in the vine, that's him. The whole purpose is for the branch to bear fruit. But first, let's examine the branch. The Greek number 2814 for branches is klema, with a root meaning a limb or a shoot, specifically vine branches. These limbs are a tender and flexible part of the branch. Do you know the root meaning for limb is referred to as the breaking of bread as in communion? How interesting. In 2 Corinthians 11:24, when Jesus had given thanks, he broke it and said, take eat which is devouring and consuming. This is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Breaking bread is an activity of faith and worship, fellowshipping and sharing and devoting oneself. It is symbolizing and remembering that sacrifice Jesus was willing to go through for our sins. This devoting of oneself is to Christ Jesus. When we remember the Lord by devouring his words and consuming them and swallowing them, they become a part of us. He will abide in us and his word can be a part of our spiritual nourishment. We truly are tasting and seeing that the Lord is good as Psalms 34 verse eight says. A believer in Christ should be producing fruit, sweet fruit. It is interesting to note here that some branches or limbs contain suckers that can slow the production of the fruit growing. These suckers can decrease the value of the fruit. Did you know that? Removing these suckers and the energy that feeds them can produce better tasting fruit by removing them. And I think you would agree that flavor is the most important thing tasting and eating fruit. If the branch does not remain in the vine or stays in connection with it, it dies and is thrown into the fire and burned. The spiritual vine, God's word, helps remove all the dead and diseased thought patterns from our lives because these thought patterns can cause our hearts to become diseased through tragic circumstances in life or thoughts full of bitterness, complaints, discouragement, disbelief, selfishness, jealousy, pride, unforgiveness, competition, lust, greed, lack of love, apathy. These all can creep into our minds and take root in the heart. This type of fruit is either tasteless or bitter. Who enjoys fruit like that? By our fruit's sweet flavor, we prove to be true disciples of Christ. Pruning or cutting the top flowering parts of the plant off is also 
beneficial and encourages the sugar to concentrate in the fruit and then it ripens quicker. What is the fruit spiritually? Galatians 5, 22 through 23 shares with us about this fruit. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Remember John 15, 5. He that abideth in me, and I in him, in other words, remains in him, to tarry and stay a while with him, to stand with him, and to continue with him, means that we will bear and endure the rigorous, hard, and exhausting things that happen during growing periods. Those same growing pains that take place when a child is growing, we must endure the growing pains. John 15, 5 also goes on to say, The same bringeth forth much fruit. Who brings forth much fruit? Those who abide in him. Remember, the fruit that comes from such a close union bears the fruit of the Spirit. In closing, are you remaining on the vine and receiving the life-giving benefits of abiding in Christ? Are you sun ripened? Are you grateful for the merciful pruning that God is doing in your life? Or do you resist it? After all, pruning can be painful. What can you name in your life today as an example of God pruning you so that you will be even more fruitful? Hopefully you will have a better understanding of how important it is for us to live in the vine to produce sweet fruit. Please join me next time as we collect all the seven statements of Jesus and display them for others to see. This will show what we found that treasure like no other because it is, Jesus is, the greatest one of all, full of great value and immeasurable worth. Now, please join me as we have our final sing-along.
the 